So I had my first fall of the trip. We were following Google's directions and Google was telling us to go through this route, which is basically like a small little pathway in between these little houses. Then all of a sudden we get to the spot here where all of a the stairs start. So obviously this is not a path for bikes. So we need to turn around. And as I stopped and we just plopped over. Moxie, Greg and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. It is a beautiful Mexico City morning and even more beautiful because we are on our way out of Mexico City. It's a beautiful city. It's a crazy, terrible, chaotic, wonderful city. And the best part is getting there and then even the better part is getting out of there. So we're on our way out to Lerma, to the BMW, where the temporary fix uh, on, on Jess's bike is done. The permanent fixes are also done, so we are good to go, ideally. Moxie and I, we have arrived at Lerma BMW to pick up my motorcycle, hopefully for the last time for a little bit. Uh, they were able to do a temporary fix. Uh, we're waiting for the guy to come out and give us more information. But then we'll be able to ride this to Torreon, where we got the piece delivered to us. Moxie has been getting a lot of love from the people here at the BMW. It's a Friday, so I guess people are bringing their bikes in or, or picking them up, I guess, for the ride uh, this weekend. We've been here for quite a while now. It's been over an hour. So trying to get everything sorted. Um, they forgot to bring our screws, and then they brought screws, but then they forgot to put the washers back on. We were getting ready to leave, and we decided to check on the carrier to make sure that it was tightened and everything was okay. But then they forgot to put two of the screws in. So now the guy is like looking all over for them yeah, to try to put them in. The screws, like two main yeah, screws that, that go into the, the chassis. Yeah. yeah. So he's getting those sorted, and it's 10 o'clock. We're trying to get up to San Miguel today to see with Chrissy, and then uh, yeah. we will uh, maybe be on our way in like 30 minutes. But he did say that the oil thing should be good, uh, at least until we get to Torreon. He didn't sound that confident, but look, we're gonna give it a try. So Greg's been dealing with that, and I've been monitoring Moxie. But uh, I spoke to Chrissy, who we're gonna see in San Miguel, and I told her that we'll be there this afternoon sometime. Um, if everything goes well and that our oil doesn't start to leak. So we're riding along just as we had left the BMW this morning. We're on the highway and all of a sudden Jess sees a wallet go flying out from the window of a truck of one of the semis and you know whips past her going like 70 miles an hour. Now, at that speed, like, there's nothing really you're gonna do about it unless you've got the cat-like reflexes to snatch it out of the air. But the first thing that comes out of her mind is she says, maybe he just picked up a hitchhiker and threw her wallet out the window. <laughs> so then we're continuing along and we're seeing these sort of like billows of smoke going up, kind of like a little bit of a twister, but sort of these billows of smoke. And uh, what is that? I wonder what, you know, what they're doing over there. Maybe it's a crematorium. <laughs> if you know her, this is perfectly like, this is Jessica's mind. So far, so good. My motorcycle has held up since we left the BMW. We've done about 60 miles and there hasn't been any leakage yet. I say yet just because I'm cautious that their temporary fix is actually gonna work but everything is fine with the bike right now as is and we have another three hours left to go but i'll just keep a, keep an eye on it just a quick time out to tell you how you can support the go roughly around the world adventure for girl up you can donate directly to girl up at go roughly.com slash world dash adventure you can make a purchase at go roughly.com where 10 percent goes towards the fundraiser tell all your friends and family about it and of course like this video and subscribe to the channel thanks so much now back to the adventure so we pulled over by this really gnarly river so we are definitely keeping moxie away from it Jess bathed her last night, so there's no going in a gnarly agricultural runoff river. She is, however, hucking to her heart's content, which means digging up all the dust and dirt. So, you can only win so many battles. Our first break of the day, we're having our coffee 
We have some figs and we picked up some pistachios along the way. We're also having a little flan, a flancito, that is left over from dinner last night. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday first fall of the trip um, we were following Google's directions to Chrissy's place and we already had missed twice Greg made the first error following Google I made the second error following Google which required us to go like all the way up and then come back down uh, back into the town and Google was telling us to go through this route which is basically like a small little pathway in between these little houses and all of a sudden we get to the spot here where all of the stairs start so obviously this is not a path for bikes, so we need to turn around and as I stopped and we just plopped over. Moxie just hung out there and then I let her loose and then she just uh, snuffed around to, a little bit. To get into it with some local dogs. Yeah, she wanted to, but we, we prevented that. city we probably circled it like three times until we decided to bug out and not get into the town and find parking and uh, meet up with Chrissy that night we decided to just come to a hotel a bit further out from the town but it's an easier walk yeah Jessica so she who walks down must then walk back up I hope you realize that and so we don't have to drive into all the the steepness and the cobblestones and all that. We found a hotel on the Panoramica, which is like this beautiful, windy stretch of the hills right around that just like crowns the, the city. You can get these beautiful views of the city from there. And then from the Panoramica, it's like a 10 minute walk down to the center and then there you are. So why wouldn't you do that? Why look for a hotel right in the center? Today we're gonna meet Chrissy. We're gonna go for a walk with the dogs. The game is her dog and she's got a Belgian Malinois who does not, they don't like each other. They've met before and uh, game was on muzzle um, and they just didn't get along. But it was also because it was at her place. So we're hoping that maybe uh, having them in this neutral area 
They might be a little bit better, but we'll see if they'll be on leash. Game just flat out does not like Moxie. We don't exactly understand why, because Game's not particularly aggressive towards any other dogs, but she just does not like Moxie. It's just like one of these, I don't like your smell. I don't like the cut of your jib. I don't like the shape of your paws. And Game is not having any of it. So this is a at distance walk. This is not a sort of, we are all part of a pack being friendly. It's too bad because Chrissy is awesome. Game is awesome. It's just that Game and Moxie are not awesome together. So we gotta, you know, accept that there's a little uh, mala sangre here with Game and not walk right next to each other. What did we do, Moxie? What happened? What's going on? Are you trapped? What do you do after a nice, long, wonderful, long walk with your friend Chrissy uh, that leaves you basically on the totally other side of Guanajuato and your checkout time is like now? Well, you get a cab. Or more precisely, you flag down cabs for 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, about a dozen cabs until the 13th uh, cab is the one that accepts the German Shepherd. You always said we were the good ones. From my fall yesterday, uh, one of the bolts looks like it came out, so Greg is over here fixing it. So we're doing that before we get to San Miguel. But now we're standing on the best side too. Oh, I never meant to hurt you, but I hurt you, so sorry for that. Now you need space, I get it. See what happened to me there? <laughs> Cutting my face off? I know you're the most important one, but like uh, I noticed I have all of these like give pieces me a fucking of hair. look at me again. I'm like <laughs> I'm cropped out here. I'm Hold at the on. I'm at the like bendy side of the camera Hold where my that. face is getting warped. Hold on, let me let me at least like oh, fix it. Oh my god, what a spare ball I am in this yeah. whole trip. <laughs> Moxie's been enjoying her dehydrated beef lungs that we got when we were in Mexico City. So she's been having that as a snack. And now she's just here, half asleep, still trying to ask me for more. What is the perfect moto picnic? I guess it depends on the person and your gustos, your taste. For us, it is some sourdough bread that has what, garlic and some cheese in it. It's like and a baked- Cheese and, pe and pesto or something. And it's like integral. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Uh, fresh figs, pistachios, and beef lungs. And beef lungs, of course. to San Miguel de Allende and we're going to be staying with Fernando who we met at the BMW in Mexico City. Después de un año de que empezó la pandemia, decidí venirme a vivir aquí a una comunidad muy pequeñita a las afueras de San Miguel de Allende, que es una de las ciudades más más bonitas de México. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance, but now I don't know where you are. Está un poquito retirado de San Miguel para llegar aquí hay que hacer como 30 minutos más o menos de terracería, pero es una comunidad que me ha dado mucho en, en muchos sentidos porque es una paz 
que no había sentido hacía mucho tiempo la, la paz que siento aquí. En contacto diario con la naturaleza, día y noche, para mí es, es una maravilla. Siempre tuve ganas de salirme de la Ciudad de México. Me costó un poco de trabajo por dejar a mis hijos allá, pero me está sirviendo mucho esto, estoy encontrando mucha paz. Y la gente que he conocido aquí ha sido gente igual maravillosa, gente, unos grandes seres humanos. Notas ahí la calidad humana de, de cada uno de, de, de los habitantes de este lugar o, o por lo menos todos los que he llegado a conocer. It's been 30 minutes of riding this dirt road to get to Fernando's house. He gave us the, the uh, GPS points on the map and this is where it took us. And there is like nothing right here, not sure which one his is, so we're gonna get in contact with him. The road was, there were some tough spots. It was like that cobblestone. And then on the side, sometimes there were um, just flatter dirt sections where motorcyclists have gone. So we were able to do a mix of that. Realmente llegué a, aquí a, a este estudio que estaba pues abandonado prácticamente, ¿no? Y te digo, en las noches salía y, y sentía miedo porque no sabía realmente pues que había alrededor ni los vecinos como eran y yo tengo mis computadoras, mis cámaras, mis discos duros y pues cosas personales muy importantes que de mucho cariño y al principio pensaba yo traerme una caja fuerte yo decía pues voy con una pinche caja fuerte de, de esas de banco que no la puedes cargar entre, entre ocho después de estar aquí unos días y después de conocer al, al, a la gente del pueblo y a los niños del pueblo y a todo Veo que no hay necesidad de una caja fuerte. De hecho, la llave se quedó ahí y todo el mundo sabe que ahí está la llave. Y ahí están mis cámaras, ahí está todo. Digo, esto no lo vayas a pasar en México porque no vaya a ser. Viví una experiencia increíble de estar rodeado de tantos tiburones y sentirme tan seguro que me sentía más seguro ahí que, que en la ciudad. Quería compartirlo. Entonces llegué a México y lo primero que hice fue ir a comprar una computadora. Me tardé como unos seis meses en editar el video porque no tenía ni idea de cómo aprender una computadora. Y ya cuando nos juntamos todos los amigos a ver el video, estaba una de las hermanas de uno de ellos y me dijo que si le hacía el video de su boda y le dije que, que no, que si estaba loca, que yo videos de boda no hacía para nada. Y este, estuvimos platicando ahí como una hora hasta que me convenció y le hice su boda. Y luego me salió otra en un lugar que se llama Carelles, y otra en Los Cabos, otra en Ixtapa, otra en Acapulco, otra en Cancún, en Tulum y así por todo México. Quise dedicar a, a lo que me, más me gustaba, que era la fotografía y el video. Y, y pensé que iba a ser más fácil vivir de eso, porque ya había hecho como 20 o 30 bodas. Pasaron cuatro años y estuve a nada de tirar la toalla. De hecho, fui con un amigo mío a pedirle trabajo. Y a la semana nos volvimos a juntar y me dijo que no me iba a dar trabajo. <risa> Lo cual fue lo mejor que me ha pasado en la vida, porque me seguí dedicando a lo que me gusta y creo que no hay nada en este mundo que se compare a vivir de lo que te gusta. Se me salen un poquito las lágrimas, porque, no. porque fue una época muy difícil y más con tres hijos. Había fines de semana que no tenía para, para darles de comer ¿no? y luego me hablaban del colegio que me decían que si no pagaba el lunes las colegiaturas los, los iban a tener que regresar a sus casas pero bueno, ya después de unos 4 o 5 años ya empecé a vivir de lo que más me gusta y después llegó la pandemia 
fíjate, de, de, de 40 o 50 bodas a 7. Estuve casi todo un año sin recibir un peso de lo que era mi trabajo. Este, me decidí a volver a pintar otra vez. Yo hace como 15 años había estado pintando. Hice varias exposiciones y estuve en algunos concursos y me gané algunas menciones honoríficas. Y, y ahorita lo retomé otra vez desde hace como un año y medio y estoy... Eso es lo que me ha ayudado a, a ahorita a salir adelante. Después de un año de que empezó la pandemia, decidí venirme a vivir aquí y me está sirviendo mucho esto, estoy encontrando mucha paz. We are on our way to Zacatecas. We left this morning from Fernando's place with Claudia and the dogs and uh, did a little off-road leaving them. And then... Uh, a little off-road to get to the place that was closed and barred <laughs> and right. shut down by the government. Greg thought he was doing so good by bringing us to this place here that is supposed to have like uh, interesting sculptures and things like that. And we took a number of dirt roads to get here and we got here and it looks like the government has shut them down. It is always Jess who finds the cool things and, you know, gets us to interesting places. And I'm just kind of like along for the ride. So I thought I was doing this great thing by finding this what looked to be a very cool place and it is shut down by civil protection. So maybe they were in like a pandemic breach or maybe they didn't pay their taxes or who knows, but um, I failed us. So no viewing for us and we will turn back around and go back out. High speed riding day. Yeah. What it's been. And uh, I've been noticing that Moxie's been like closing her eyes in a rec specs. She's been doing a bit of that. Dozing. Yeah. Well, it's been like hot and cold and it's been a mix of everything today. She is exhausted. Basically, this whole go roughly around the world is really just moxie being exhausted in one place after another. <laughs> We're fine. This, this isn't my exhausted face. This is my normal face. Yeah. This isn't Jess's normal face. This is her... Sunburn face. Yeah. But uh, long, long afternoon of just windswept, yeah. hot, high speed riding. Mm -hmm. And now we've basically taken shelter at this little health center next to a church on the side of the highway where there's a little bit of shade. And then tomorrow we're gonna head up to Torreon and I have to check the tracking to make sure that our package is going to arrive. It said by Tuesday end of day, my cylinder head cover that we ordered from the States should be coming um, and we can pick it up at the UPS in Torreon and then Greg is going to make an appointment with the um, the BMW there to have them uh, do the install for us. Uh, I've been keeping up, keeping an eye out for oil leaks on my bike and I haven't noticed anything. Everything has been pretty smooth. Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out So then we're pulling over, just trying to get them to jiggle these things around. So, quick fix that I think is going to solve our problem. All it takes is electrical tape. <laughs> I know Giant Loop was trying to do me a favor by when I asked for the bigger tank bag, the Fandango. 
it was taller than the Diablo, which I used to have. Problem is, it gives me a lot more space to put stuff in it. And um, I've been struggling to try and keep it to a minimum. And Gregory is getting a little bit mad at me because I keep overstuffing it. And then I ask him to go get things from it. And then he can't even like open it because I've like stuffed it so much. So giant loop. It's a wonderful tank bag. But I really should have gone down a size so that I wouldn't keep putting so much stuff in it. So as a dog on moto traveler, currently on a rest stop in an urban area, I have pretty much the best possible setup that you could ever enjoy. I've got glass windows, a perfect view of the bikes and of our dog that's waiting outside. And I can just keep an eye on and enjoy the sight of all three of them. Greg decided to go up the road that leads to this sort of broken down church and uh, Boxy and I are hanging out to see uh, if it's uh, worthy to come up <laughs> or if we'll take a break elsewhere but it's a really like cool looking uh, ruins that's uh, on our way. We're in Torreon, but we've got to pick up some food for Moxie. We are kibbleless, and that's not acceptable, so we've come to a pet co. Success! We are kibbled for at least the next week. This is a 10 pounder, which means that we've got for the next three days where we'll be working, plus six pounds that we'll be taking on the road when we go, which is ideal to get us through the next four days of travel. So we are properly and fully and correctly kibbled. Hi guys, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that episode. We've met a lot of really wonderful people along the way. And one of them that you saw in this episode was Fernando, uh, who we met at the BMW in Mexico City. And he invited us to come out and stay at his place. And in the past, you know, normally uh, I would have sort of hesitated to say yes. And it's for a number of reasons. One of them is because I don't want to promise that we're going to be somewhere. Um, because you never know what's going to happen with the bikes or with Moxie or in my case, it was sort of like the road conditions. A lot of the times when people invite us and they tell me that, hey, there's like a dirt stretch, which happened to be in this case, the same thing, uh, in order to get to their place, um, I really sort of hesitate about it because like, I don't wanna say yes in the event that I get there and I don't feel like I can do it. Uh, but in this case, I accepted the challenge. He told us uh, when we were there that there was going to be dirt, um, but he says that he does it all the time. And okay, well, he had a, a 1200, and so I said, okay, let me let me give it a try. So we get there, and of course, you see that it's like all like this broken down cobblestone, and there's sand bits, and there's like the the gravel dirt, and. Um, I said, okay, we're gonna do this. So as we get on that stretch, um, I was still a little bit anxious. And it's funny because when I'm anxious, Moxie must really sense it because she ends up getting uh, really fidgety on the back of the bike. It's like she wants to get down because she feels like I'm not confident. And in that case, uh, it was true. I sort of like got onto the dirt and the beginning part was okay. And then it started getting uh, more difficult with these like cobblestones uh, that were broken down. And then Moxie started fidgeting. And I, I, at the beginning I was like, does she need to get down? Because normally when she fidgets, it means that she needs to take a break or go for a pee or whatever the case is. Um, but, in, uh, but this time it's like we had just let her down. So I didn't think that was the case. And then it just sort of clicked like, yes, she was feeling fidgety and anxious because I was feeling a little bit anxious. And once I sort of noticed that, I, I calmed down. I sort of said, okay, I'm doing this. I accept the challenge. I am going to ride this stretch. And I did it. And within a few minutes, Moxie calmed down and uh, we were able to do it. And it really is a testament to sort of the changes that I've gone through during this 
past month and a half of, of this adventure so far. Uh, being able to say yes to a challenge and even if we weren't going to make it, at least uh, I was going to give it a try. And in this case, I was able to make it. We had such a lovely evening with them and that night at Fernando's place in his art gallery, it was just wonderful. And Claudia was their neighbor um, and they had the dogs and they could run free and they go swimming in the lake. You know, it was it was a wonderful experience that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't said yes to it. So it just reminds me that, uh, you know, when you're traveling, obviously you have to be uh, open and willing to accept those types of invitations. Um, and look, and if we if we got there and I couldn't have done the road, I'm sure Fernando would have understood. Um, if I had to say I, I don't feel comfortable doing it and like there's no way that like I'm walking for the 30 minute ride <laughs> to get to your place, I think he'd understand. But um, I'm glad that I was willing to give it a try because that's really what this adventure is all about for me. It's, it's trying to get out of my comfort zone and be willing to accept these challenges. And even if it means that I don't succeed, at least I've given it a try. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and at Go Roughly for Facebook and Instagram. New episodes come out every Sunday at 11 a.m. Central, so make sure that your notifications are turned on so that you know when a new one comes out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.